Hey, it's Albert Crow here with Mainland Cycle Center. I'm here with our service manager, Jerry Goodwin. And today we want to talk a little bit about jet ski maintenance uh, and some do's and don'ts. And, and we'll really try to keep you out of trouble with your Kawasaki jet ski. So, Jerry, what's some of the basic things that, that someone needs to do with their jet ski? Well, down here, uh, we live on the Gulf Coast down here. There's one thing I'd like to touch base on. Uh, guys that are running fresh water, they may not have to go through as much as we do down here. But in the salt water, to really protect your investment, you need to do these things every single time you run your ski. If not, the salt will just deteriorate and eat everything. So the uh, main thing is to flush your ski every time you run it. Uh, we use a product called Salt Away down here. Uh, it basically breaks down the salt enzymes and, and helps eat that salt out of the cooling system. Uh, if not, that stuff's going to stay in there and calcify, and it's just going to rust and it's gonna cause problems down the road for sure, guaranteed. So this has like a little adapter that I hook to my garden hose, and it's got a little cup, and I pour some of this fluid in there, and it's kinda of like one of those lawn feeder things that I've seen before, am I right? Yes, sir, it's got a open and close on top here, so basically you hook okay. this to your fill. Uh, uh, this flush. One, it's on the back. That's right, these are on the back. And so I can literally hook this to my garden hose and run it through the jet ski? Yes, sir. Very uh, cool. So, you know, of course you wanna fire your ski up first, Get it going, turn on your water, and once the water comes start starts coming out the back and out of your, your side, you'll feed this just by turning it, just like you said, like your garden hose, uh, like your, your, your feeder for your garden hose, and then it'll start flushing the salt away through. So how long do I need to flush it for? Should I run it for 30 seconds or 20 minutes? I would run it for 15, 20 minutes. It's not going to hurt it. Uh, probably the more the merrier. In a honest. minimum of what? Maybe five minutes at My, least? Yeah, if you're in a hurry, at least go five minutes. And like I said, if you're in salt water, run salt away. After you flush the ski, it can't hurt to take the salt away and spray it up around the impeller and on the ride plate. Anything, you know, exterior metal. You can even spray it underneath the back of your truck if you got a little water or on your trailer when you were putting the ski in the water. You can even wet your trailer down, your life vests. Mm -hmm. Anything, Anything to get salt on. Anything to get It'll salt break down that enzyme. So when we talk about flushing, on this one, this is a 2016 Ultra 310X. So on the back here, you've got two connections. And so if I understand correctly, uh, the black is for the motor. Yep. And so what you'll do on this one is hook your hose up, <coughs> but you don't run, we, we like to say you don't run the motor without running uh, the water, and you don't want to run the water without running the engine. So what we like to do, you can run the moat, the engine for 15 seconds or so without water. Yeah. So crank your engine up, then turn your water on, hook to the black, and run that for anywhere from five to 15 minutes to flush it. A little less if you're in fresh water, but, but it won't hurt it as long as you're hooked up there. And then uh, when you get ready to stop, turn your water off, mm -hmm. and then turn the engine off. Yeah, and it's okay. good to give it, uh, after you've shut the water off, let the engine run for 10 or 15 seconds to give it a couple of revs just to push any excess water out and then shut it down. Okay, and then the gray one, what's that one for? This one's for your intercooler. Um, basically, you want to flush your intercooler out. Uh, you can use salt away for that too. So, do I run the motor when I do that one? Don't have to do that. Do not run the motor. You don't as a need to do fact. that. No, you just want to, it will it'll go through the system and flush it out. And we had a gentleman that was doing this actually. And he was overheating his motor, and he couldn't understand why I was doing that. Well, he wasn't getting any water through his cooling system, only through his intercooler. So when you're flushing your intercooler, do not run the motor, because you will overheat the motor. So the gray one, and it, there's a little sticker here that tells you what to do if you're not sure. But the gray one's for your intercooler. Run the water, but not the motor. Anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes is fine. And then on this side, the engine, you don't want to run the water without running the engine. You don't want to run the engine for more than about 15 seconds without running the water. You do that, and you'll be flushed pretty good, huh, Jerry? Yes, sir. All right. And again, you want to do this every single time you put this boat in salt, for sure. Any time in the salt water. Yeah, it it can't hurt on fresh, too, but if, if it's been in salt, do it. Do it every time. So what else should I need to do? We've got a couple other products here. With these supercharged jet skis, what's the other thing that's a uh, have to do that you got to do every time? Well, the, the supercharger, uh, you have a big plenum intake here, and then the supercharger basically works on a twin vortice system. Uh, the new Kawasaki's have a twin screw supercharger system. So you basically have tw twin vortices that interlock together, and you want to get any salt or any moisture out of there too. Uh, so literally the salt air down here on the coast 
can corrode the inside of the supercharger is what we're saying. Yes, sir. And it'll affect how much bo your boost and eventually it'll eat away at that Teflon. So material. what's the solution to that? How do I keep that from happening to my new jet ski? Well, you need to fog it. Fog it? You need to fog your intercooler and your supercharger. So this is uh, MPPLs by Maxima and uh, says right on the can, excellent fogging oil. Jerry has pulled this little cap a little off of cap. here, this little fitting on the Ultra 310. And uh, this has got a little straw on it. And basically, what you want to do is, one last thing, when you're through flushing and everything, you want to spray this in here for 10 seconds. 10 or 15 seconds. 10 or 15 seconds. Yeah, the motor will bog a little bit and it'll come right back. But while the motor's running, you'll spray this in there for 10 or 15 seconds and then push the stop button and you're done. Okay, you want to do that last thing after you've done your flush. Now, do I have to hook up the water while I'm fogging it? No, sir. If you're only going to run it for 10 or 15 seconds, it'll be fine. So that's long um, enough. And some of the older skis, I'd, I'd like to tell you guys about, some of the older skis didn't have this feature, but Kawasaki does ultra, offer a, a retrofit kit uh, for the supercharged jet ski. So if you don't have this and you're running in salt for sure, you need to get it retrofitted. So if I've got an Ultra 250 or an Ultra 260 or an early model 300, I can add this kit to it if it doesn't have this. Yes, sir. It's fairly awesome. easy and readily available kits. So what's next, Jerry? What else should I do? Um, you know, of course, you want to let the ski cool down a little bit. Um, and, you know, the, just like any boat that you would own, uh, clean, clean, clean. Clean the boat from one end to the other. Make sure anything that could have any corrosion or, or fiberglass that could get water spots on it. I'm a clean freak. I like to keep my stuff clean, protect my investment. Uh, okay. Once the motor cools down, you can kind of you can clean inside your engine bay with the hose. If you want to lift it up, you can spray the bottom of the hull out. So I can wash this out with my water hose, no problem. No problem. Yeah, I mean you don't want to concentrate on any electrical material. So like, I don't want to use know, my pressure washer inside of here. Exactly. Do but if you just want to rinse it out and uh, pull the plugs in the back of the boat, of course, uh, there's a couple of plugs back here that you want to you want to drop it off. And this will let any water that gets in the hull come out the back of the boat. I know at my house where I do this, I have a little step ladder. And I set the tongue and the trailer on my little step ladder so the boat has something to hang. Just yeah, you just want everything to flow. Out. Yeah. And it, after the motor's cooled down, you got everything cleaned up. Uh, Albert has a product here that we really like. Uh, it's made by Motor X. Motor X, everything Motor X makes is awesome. It's a product of Switzerland. Uh, this is a synthetic grease. And it sticks and it stays. We've had really good luck with it down here. Uh, you know, anybody that lives by the water or the ocean, that's just a byproduct of your environment is salt corrosion. So what, what we found with this is that this doesn't evaporate evap evaporate away like some of the other products, like maybe using just W40. And then it also has a really nice kind of clean golden color look to it that looks very nice on the engine as opposed to using, say, white lithium grease. Basically what we'll do is we want to put a coat of oil all over this metal that's in here. Uh, by doing that, we keep the oxygen from getting to it and because uh, that oxygen is what's caused oxidation or corrosion. And so uh, we just want to coat everything. I always tell customers when they're buying a new jet ski to think of this spray as kind of like Arbor All for metal. Yep. So just like you use Arbor All on the dash and the vinyl in your car, use this for all the metal on your jet ski. So even me, I'm kind of a freak. I'll turn my seat over and I like to wipe this stuff on the seat staples because it looks it's it's a good idea. Right. So, Everything corrodes down here if you don't touch it. I mean, the ideal of detailing something is if you can see it, clean it. See it clean that's it. that's the good. detail, uh, man's detail guide to uh, getting things clean. So, so the, the last thing that, uh, that a guy should do if he has any of the Kawasaki 1500 um, yeah, these guys run some really nice plugs. Um, Come, on Come on in, Delbert. Give them a this is a high-end plug here, platinum, laser platinum plug. Uh, anytime you're forced induction, you're going to be adding fuel and you're going to be adding more electronics, more fire. So uh, this guy has a nice electrode in it, but from time to time, you're going to have to replace these. Uh, if your ski's running boggy or you're just not feeling performance anymore, Nine out of times out of ten, what we found is a spark, a new spark set of spark plugs, and uh, you know maybe some fuel treatment, like some Lucas fuel treatment or something, or a fresh tank of gas, and just go run. These skis, these skis are made to be run hard. I've actually had Kawasaki themselves tell me maybe they're not running hard enough. So, uh, but you have an aluminum head, and then you can see how thin. 
the base of these spark plugs are. So anytime you replace your spark plugs, you want to never seize, anti-seize this plug inside that head. And we've seen over time that the plug will get stuck in there, and when you try to remove it, snap. So next thing you know, you've opened a can of worms, and you got to remove the cylinder head and, and you know try to get that plug out. So of there. this is where your spark plugs are. Is underneath these four? These are a, a uh, are these a stick coil? Yes, or, sir. Yeah, stick coil. Uh, no, I think the coil's in there because it's a heavy electrode going to it. But yes, this is your spark plug right cap. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, this is a spark plug cap. And uh, so underneath each one of these is your spark plug. So this uses on all your uh, 1500s, uh, it's going to use a 5 8 uh, spark plug socket. You could use a regular socket, but a 5 8 spark, socket is, spark plug socket is typically going to be thin wall and it has a piece of rubber in it so you can pull, extract the spark plug. If not, you'll need a magnet or something to get it out. But uh, anytime you put new spark plugs in your Ultra 310, you want to use that anti-seize on it so that you don't, next time you go to remove a plug, you don't snap those plug off. We do what, four, five, six jet skis a year that have yeah. broken spark plugs off on them? Yeah. And typically what has to happen? The cylinder head has to come off? Yes, sir. Uh, intake gaskets, from, the intake has to come off, cylinder head has to come off, flip the head over and remove it from the backside because you can't get it out here, everything's going to fall into the cylinder head into your piston. So what does a job like that cost? Is that like $500 or $1,500, thousand bucks? What's a job like that cost? It usually runs uh, between $800 and $1,000. $800 in labor and the rest in gaskets. Yeah. Uh, it's and, very labor yeah. intensive to do that, isn't it? You can see there's not much room to work inside these guys. And so this is anti-seize that'll stop that. And this anti-seize costs what? $4.99. $4 a very good investment, isn't it? Yes. yes. <laughs> so anytime you're putting new spark plugs in uh, your Kawasaki STX 15F, STX 12F, Ultra 250, Ultra 260, Ultra 300, Ultra 310, Ultra LX, if you've got a Kawasaki four-stroke jet ski, you need to be, if you're installing new spark plugs, put anti-seize on. If you've got one of these and you don't know if they've been anti-seized, go out there and pull your spark plugs out and put some anti-seize on the spark plugs. Why well, you got to put a new set of spark plugs on it? But be careful. If that thing doesn't want to come out, you can spray some, you know, you try some penetrating it. down in there and soak it. I guarantee you, if you hook onto that thing and you just start cranking and it doesn't want to come, it's going to break. So be patient with it. If you've never anti-seized them or never seized them, uh, be patient with it and try to work that spark plug out or you're definitely going to be digging into this motor. Don't, don't break it for sure. But uh, if you are putting new spark plugs in your ski, then uh, do this. And a lot of times we see them, they usually only break one of them, right? It seems like they always get all three out except for one. Except for one. Okay. Yeah. We've never seen yeah. one that broke all four or broke two or three, I don't think. Yes, sir. I, I think, uh, don't know if it has to do with heat uh, in a certain cylinder. Is it typically a front or rear that you can remember? Uh, it tends to be a rear. It tends to be the rear, rear cylinder, cylinder, so for whatever cool. reason. But uh, And I see those spark plugs if you're putting them in there. So. Uh, I think we're getting pretty close. Maybe we'll just show them how to check the oil. So here's your oil dipstick. Uh, you want to make sure the jet ski is sitting real level. And uh, basically, it's just like any other dipstick. Pull it out, wipe it clean, and then dip it uh, back in to check your engine oil. Um, the only other thing, we may do a different video on it, but we talk about is uh, uh, we'll do a different video on uh, what to do if you submerge your jet ski on that. But uh, So hopefully, this will give you a really good start. Uh, on uh, some do's and don'ts. Keep that jet ski clean. Flush it if you're riding in salt water. Be sure and fog it, especially if you're in uh, a coastal area uh, where you have the salt air. You want to fog that jet ski every time you ride it. And, uh, and then just keep them clean if you can. Store it in the garage. For sure, keep it covered. Now the elements. And you'll get a lot of service out of your jet ski. It'll do really well. Jerry, thanks for uh, sharing all that great knowledge with us. And uh, uh, we look forward to seeing you. If you have any problems or any questions, Jerry's our service manager here at Mainland Cycle, Cycle Center. Give him a call at 409-948-4969. Hey, thanks for watching.